Welcome to episode 7. I don't know whether or not you watched the last bug episode, which uh, was just a short little episode where I fixed some missing chunk issues, but you should now be in this sort of environment. In fact, this in exact environment, where we we're popping new chunks into existence, but they are... Oh, you know what? I'm still having the same bug. Unity is still desynced with MonoDevelop. That is bullshit. I can only assume that that's because I've switched over to source control mode or something. Yeah. So now I just quit out of Unity and reloaded it while the game was paused, while the uh, video was paused. And you can see that uh, the chunks pop into existence at whatever draw distance I've told them to pop into existence at. And they do it with minimal pausing. The frame rate issues you see are actually mostly due to my uh, um, my recording software. But they're all the same. So let's go ahead and make it so they're not all the same. And that means that we have to make it so that we have a... Um, here in chunk... We need to make it so that we add our position to our noise values. Uh, in chunk... I open up chunk and it gives me world. Uh, okay. So we have to add our position. Transform.position.x And here, transform.position.y. All of that shouldn't change, so there's really no reason for that, but it's okay. So here we're going to find a fun issue. I'm going to hit play, and we're going to get errors. So it says, array index is out of range. And this is actually an error with our noise generation function. See, the noise generation function does, in fact, have a maximum cap on the float values. and I don't happen to know what that is off the top of my head. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, just check and see which chunk it is that's having the value. Oh, it's one at negative 30, negative 30. Oh, well, it turns out that the chunks, the value of the chunk is not, um, uh, the, the noise generator doesn't run out. It just doesn't go below zero. So we have to be careful not to go below zero when we do this. So to that end, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our chunk and we're going to say that uh, if noise x is less than zero, noise x plus equals, uh, uh, noise x, uh, we can actually just go ahead and say mathf.abs. Now, we're going to run into an issue where this actually creates a cliff, a break, and I'll show you that in a second here. So now when I hit play, you can see that we got... zoom out. There we go. You can see that we've got a rather nice contiguous set of lands, except that there's this sharp cliff here. And that cliff is probably because of our absolute value rounding. Let's go on a little walk. Um, but the thing is that we're going to be adding a very large value to those, so we don't need to worry about that cliff popping up over and over again. Um, it'll only pop up once, and it'll probably only pop up at an extreme value, and nobody's going to notice a tiny cliff. So those of you who remember my old brush tutorials um, may be thinking this is a lot easier than the brush tutorials. But we do have a problem, and I don't know if you noticed it or not. We have a lot of duplicates, and I mean a lot. So here is our familiar floating turd chunk, and then it's pop, it pops up again uh, a couple of times. And you can see that here we've got a duplicate, uh, negative and positive duplicate, and then negative and positive duplicate, and then some other stuff. Uh, it, it, there's some duplication going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to offset by a large amount based on what our seed is. Now we know what the seed is because it's here in the world script, seed, and we set it if it wasn't set. So here in chunk, when we're generating our chunk, the first thing we actually need to do is set our seed. Uh, so we set our seed equal to world.seed, uh, world.currentworld.seed easy enough, right? But that's not actually... Um, actually, that should work fine. We're not doing the brush thing anymore. For brushes, that's not sufficient. Uh, but here, that's only going to work because we actually need to... Uh, we set the seed correctly, but then we need to also... 
um, set our offsets. So vector3 offset equals, and then here we have a lot of options. We're just going to go ahead and take the simplest option. Just a big ass random number. Uh, and that's 10,000 in case you're wondering. So then we just offset all of these by that amount. And the reason that this uh, works is because they'll always be offset by the same amount. All of the blocks uh, use this same offset value because they all set the seed value before they do all of their calculations. And so now we shouldn't have that repetitive cliff situation. Uh, we still will have cliffs, of course, that's part of the fun, but it won't be repetitive. So now we have a continuous uh, and unique environment. It's really not that hard to do. Um, the problem is, of course, that the uh, environment we're creating is pretty bland. Uh, and that's not just a factor of it being all made out of gray tiles. It's also a problem with uh, relying too heavily on the random noise field rather than uh, having a more intelligent system. But either way, uh, you can see that everything is a little bit more unique now. And uh, it looks very... Uh, it's hard to tell that everything's more unique because we don't actually add a lot of uniqueness um, to our game. But you can see that there are some things that look like they might not be unique, like this guy here and this guy here. They look almost identical, but they're not. Um, they just are very similar. So we might have to tweak some of our parameters later on to make them so they're so to avoid that sort of thing. Uh, it'll probably get drowned out by our attempts to make mountain ranges. Either way, that's this episode done. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and implement multiple kinds of tiles, because I'm sick and tired of this plain white tile set.